Welcome, my name is Francois, and today we will finish a backpack hanger board. This is actually the first project I thought of filming, so we're already sort of halfway through. The plank of oak has been sanded, routed, stained, and that's about the moment I thought, hey, maybe I should film this. So you can see half the design here and a little X right above it which I've marked all my drilling point for the hooks that are going to go. And I use them for alignment as well, because I can only engrave half the boards at the time. So here's the first time lap for the second half. engraving looks good and I'm happy to see that the alignment is correct because there's so much work that goes into preparation up to that point and if I mess up it's a lot of work to start over so it happens but not today here I'm applying a clear lacquer to seal all the edges that were engraved it did expose the wood grain and that way when I paint over it the paint doesn't get sucked in and the line work stays sharp. Once the lacquer has dried, it's time for paint. Here I'm using an airbrush to apply a primer coat. That way, when the paint goes over, if it's not perfect with all the details of the engraving, it really won't show as much. Sometimes it's just a small attention, but to me, it made a big difference. As you see, I changed my mind from going for a white paint to a black paint. At first I thought white would look great, but I remember I already have an engraved plank near where that one will go, and I'd rather keep the visual continuity in the design and the colors used. Now I might be a little close to what I'm spraying, but ultimately this is just a base coat or primer, so it won't matter much. I think my main focus was to ensure that I had paint in all the details of the engraving. So I was a little generous with the application, but that's in part because I'm about to put a thickened paint. And the reason for that is it makes a little bevel when I thicken my paint so that it doesn't look like a square hole. It'll make like a little rounded edge. It's really subtle. But again, sometimes it's in the details. And the issue with the thicken paint is that it's harder to get through all the little crevasse and cracks and details of the engraving. So that's why I'm really generous with my primer coat. Although it is a personal project, I want to do it right. Because if I was to do it for someone else, I want my paint to be perfect. So I'm doing my best, even if it's just for me. So here's me adding a gel thickener to my paint. Um, basically, 
what I found is if I just apply a normal coat of paint and the engraving, the laser is making a square engraving, it cuts straight into the wood. And so you don't get that little bevel that you typically get if you use a CNC for doing the engraving. So when it's relatively small lines, I find that thickening my paint give me exactly that. So I apply a generous amount over all the lines and when it dry, it will make that little bevel or that little valley shape instead of being just a square line into the wood. It's very possible I'm the only one who would ever notice that, but I do, so I care. Sometimes that's all it takes. And here you can see the coverage, mainly looking to ensure every line is filled with paint. Remember those little X mark I talked at the beginning of the video? Well, this is where I'm going to drill the pilot holes for the hooks that are going to go on the board. And I already set up the height to make sure I don't drill through the board. And I'm using my drill press to just drill right on the X mark that I've made. You can probably see the board lifting a bit when I raise the bit. It won't matter. I didn't clamp it because even if the hole is a little oval or whatever, it will be under a hook. Here the paint had time to dry and I'm inspecting it closely. What I'm mainly looking for is like any imperfection or any spills of the paint underneath the masking tape. And I use a utility kitchen knife. And the reason I like that is that it'll remove the paint without scratching the wood and I can bend the blade slightly without the blade breaking off like with a box cutter for example. So it worked pretty well for me. Now, I suspect that some of you are disappointed that I did not film the part where I removed the masking tape, but there are really two reasons why I didn't show it. The first reason is that I forgot to film it. I like to use a foam brush to spread my varnish. Um, some people say it can cause bubble, but to me, I go with a very delicate touch and it has never been a problem and that's how I seem to get the best results. Okay, okay, okay. The second reason for not showing the removal of the masking tape is because I left it for days, a lot of days, and it kept tearing out. It wasn't satisfying at all, but really I just forgot. Quick note on the varnish that I use, it's outdoor rated. It will release more VOC than an indoor version. That's what I had on hand, so that's what I used. Visually, the result is the exact same. But yeah, if it's not in a well-vented area, the VOCs can be a problem. If you still feel sad about not getting your satisfying moment, I got you. It's now time for the big reveal of the final results.